This video is going to provide an example of how to prepare your data for analysis in JASP with a few basic functions. This video goes along with Chapter 2 of the Applied Data Analysis and Psychology textbook for exploring diversity with statistics. We've used the same data for an exercise of learning how to clean data in Excel. This data is a subset of some research that was done on stigma associated with intellectual disabilities. We're going to work from an Excel file that has been cleaned and we're going to import it into JASP for this particular exercise. Some of the things we're going to learn to do in JASP include how to import data from a CSV file to JASP, how to edit the data type to reflect the appropriate level of measurement, for instance, nominal or null interval or ratio, how to add labels for nominal variables, and how to apply filters if we're interested in just a subset of our sample. This is the Excel file that was cleaned with some basic functions that were used in our previous video on how to clean data using Excel. This data file is already saved as a .csv file, which is what we'll need to import into JASP. If you have an Excel file, remember you can always save it in a different file format. Um, you see this one is CSV, but if it was, for instance, an Excel workbook.xls, you could go to File, Save As, and then save this somewhere in a file where you're going to be able to find it easily and save the file format in this drop down menu to make it .csv. And that will make it the basic format that will be able to be easily imported into JASP. Once you have your file saved somewhere where you can access it, you can open up JASP. I'm going to find this, these three blue bars here that will lead me to my file menu to open up files. So I'll go to open, I'll go to computer, and I'm going to go to browse and find the appropriate folders that are going to help me to find where my data is located. So I'm going to navigate real quick to where my actual file is and you can make sure you save yours somewhere where it is easy to find. And you'll open up this walkthrough. Mine is the ID stigma data that is already in CSV format. And when you open this up you'll see that we have our data in here in a similar format um, with our different variables and some of the new ones we created in the Excel walkthrough. One of the first things we typically want to check in our data file is to make sure that our variables are set up as the right type. And by type, I mean the right level of measurement. You'll notice that each variable beside it has a little symbol next to it. And if you click on that symbol, it will show a little drop down menu where a little ruler indicates a scale variable, which scale is just a combined term for interval or ratio. Ordinal refers to ordinal numbers that have order but don't have those equal distance between units, and nominal is just a categorical variable. So JASP will try to assign these labels as it imports them, but these aren't always correct. For instance, we know that residence was country of residence, and that would actually be a nominal variable because it doesn't have order to it. There's no higher or lower value for whether they indicated they were from the UK or Austria or Germany. So we can change that and just select nominal instead. So now JASP knows that this variable is nominal and that will affect what types of analyses we can run with that variable, making sure it is the right level of measurement so it will be properly identified for our analyses. If we scroll through, we can see that there's a couple of others. Most of these are correct, that things like education was categorical, um, age was a continuous variable. Oop, scrolls very quickly there. Um, gender is labeled as categorical, and we have our um, different variables here. One thing that you'll notice is that some of our recoded variables for our social distance items are actually set up as nominal instead of ordinal, so we can also change those for SD6 um, is ordinal, same thing for SD6R is ordinal, SD7 and SD7R 
our ordinal. And in psychology, we actually consider averages of some of these Likert scale ordinal items to be scale scores. So we're we'll going to change that one to scale since it's an average of several different items. So that's how we change our variable, lab our variable types to make sure they're indicated as the right level of measurement. We can also add labels to our data, particularly ones that are categorical. This makes them easier to view and it'll label our output in a little bit more of a descriptive way. Let's take residence, for example. If we click on the variable, we'll see it pop up that the values in this variable are one, two, and three. And we can change those to be actual labels of what one, two, and three means. So in this data set, Austria was given a label of one, and you'll see those ones change to the word Austria instead. And two was Germany. Once I hit enter, my twos will change to Germany. And three was the United Kingdom. And so all of my labels now, instead of showing up as one, twos, and threes, show the actual category and what that category means. You could give this a try and do some extra practice by labeling a few more variables. For instance, if we go to gender, we could label these so that we know a zero was a female and one in this data set, their survey option was male. We can change our education levels here so that we know what zero and one means. And in this study, a zero meant that they had at least to age 18 education, so at least some form of um, initial schooling, and then one means they had some sort of graduate education or college, and so those were the labels that they used. Other one we can do that we have some information on is this ID contact, and this means have you had contact with someone with an intellectual disability? Zero means no, and one means yes. And so those are a few examples of how we can apply labels so that our output is then gonna be a little bit more um, helpful. We can also filter out cases, particularly for nominal variables really easily by clicking on any of these. Let's say for instance, this um, residence two category option that we made where we simplified that UK was a one and Austria and Germany were given a two. We did that recoding in Excel. And let's say we wanted to run some analyses on just one of these groups. For instance, if we just wanna look at survey participants from the UK, there's a check here that we can convert to an X for Austria and Germany. So if we turn on the X for Austria and Germany, that means they're not currently active in our data set. And you'll see any data from someone from Austria or Germany is currently grayed out. If we scroll through, we only have participants from the UK. We can undo that by just making it a check again. And now everyone's being used in our data once again. So for any categorical variables, you can just check on and off if you wanna focus on a specific subgroup. The same could be true if you just wanted to focus on um, females, you could filter out males or vice versa. So that is a simple way to filter out based on a categorical response. If we wanna filter based on something numerical, for instance, if we wanted to filter based on age, there's not a drop down option of variable labels for age because it's a number, so it doesn't take on categorical labels. We can, however, compute a variable that will allow us to filter out based on age. So I'm gonna click this little plus button here. It says add a computed column. And my column name for this is gonna be age filter. And I'm going to, um, I'm gonna clarify that this is nominal because technically I'm gonna make a true or false statement that they're either filtered out or they're not filtered out. Um, you could change the level of measurement later if you missed that step. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click now, create column. And for this, I need to put in some sort of command for JASP to follow. In this case, I'm going to search for my age variable. I see age is here, and I'm going to move it over. And I want to compute a filter with where age is greater than 17. And so I want to make sure that age is greater than 17 so that I'm only analyzing people that are 18 or older in my sample. 
And so it's going to create a true or false, true age is greater than 17, or false age is less than 17. So I'm going to compute this column. And you'll see now if I click the X to clear out that menu, if I go to the very end of my data set, we'll have this column for age filter that says true or false. And we see false here, for instance, on this line of data. If we scroll all the way back over to their age, we'll see that their age was 17. They weren't greater um, than 18 years old. And then after we've computed that column, we could actually filter out those who were less than 18 years of age. We could say filter out anyone for who that is false. And so then we would not include those individuals who are 17 using that same filter option. Those are some of the main tasks we tend to want to work through before we start analyzing data in JASP. You'll learn that there's a lot of functions in here for different types of descriptive statistics and different types of analyses that we can run to test hypotheses in JASP. The last thing we'll highlight is that you can save a JASP file rather than having to import your CSV file and to save your variable labels by simply going to save as, um, save it to your computer somewhere you can browse, find an appropriate place to save it, and then you can save for this, for instance, as your walkthrough ID stigma data, JASP, and you can save it with all your edits. I'm going to also put this as complete because we've completed the actions that we you needed for the walkthrough and click save. And then if you want to access it again, you can simply go and find that JASP file in your folders and open it directly with all of those changes saved that have your variable labels and everything that you need.